Welcome back to a linguistic approach to English grammar. In this video, we're going to talk about adjectives. Now, adjectives really have one purpose, and that is to modify or to supply extra information about nouns. Now, here are the main categories of adjectives that we have. So, one of them is, of course, color. Things like the words red or orange or silver or gold. Things like that. If you have, say, a ball, you could describe it as a red ball or an orange ball or a silver ball. We can talk about the size too. Is it small? Is it large? Is it average? In fact, average can mean a lot more things than just size, but you can have, say, a small cup of coffee or a large cup of coffee. Or you could Take all the coffee in the world and say, what is the average size for a cup of coffee? Okay. We have shape too. So if you think about, I don't know, you get a new table and you're asking yourself, oh, what's the shape of the table? Like the top part where you put things on. You could have, say, a rectangular table. You could have a circular table. You could have a triangular table. And of course, there are many more shapes that we can have. Now, this last one is where the bulk of our, our adjectives are. Uh, we call this adjectives of observation. You can call these quality adjectives, um, emotions, whatever. So things like happy. For instance, you have a happy person, or you could have a beautiful person. Or say there is one person who survives after a plane crash. You might call them the sole survivor. So sole is an example of an adjective here. Now there's two different positions that adjectives can appear in, and we give each of these positions a different name. The typical position we see adjectives in are right before a noun, and we call these attributive adjectives. So these attribute the quality directly to the noun. So for instance, if we have this frame here, a blank pizza, where we have an adjective describing the pizza, uh, we could say something like a delicious pizza. Well, let's say it's a pizza that's been out there for a long time, we'll call it a moldy pizza. We can have a sloth, for instance. Maybe it is a orange sloth. Maybe it is a fast sloth. We could describe it in many different ways. Same with apartments. So my tiny apartment. Or my new apartment. These are all called attributive adjectives because they occur right before the noun. So they're usually between a determiner like a, the, my, some, and the noun itself. You can have more than one, so you can say a delicious moldy pizza, that would be fine. It'd be weird to say a delicious moldy pizza, but you can string two adjectives or three adjectives or four adjectives together. That's okay. The other position they can come in is after a linking verb or a be verb. So this would be after the verb is, am, are, or these linking verbs that we'll talk about in future videos like looks or seems. So let's look at the first example here. The pizza is blank. Well, we can use the example from before. The pizza is moldy. And in this position, what these linking verbs and be verbs do is all they do is really make this equals relationship between the noun and the adjective. So we could say the moldy pizza, or we could say the pizza is moldy. The pizza is moldy would be a complete sentence, while the moldy pizza would just be a noun phrase that we would put into a sentence. Or if we say, <clears throat> a sloth looks happy. Okay, this is sort of the same thing. This is making this equals relationship between the adjective and the sloth. So a sloth equals happy. It appears happy. Or my apartment seems large. Okay, from the inside, it might seem large and we can make this equals relationship. Now, of course, the verbs looks and seems, they have 
slightly different connotations and denotations for what they actually mean, but in a very loose sense, we have this equals relationship here. So there are some nuances to words like looks and seems that we'll talk about when we describe linking verbs, uh, but in general, it makes this connection. Now, there's some interesting things in English. For instance, some adjectives are only attributive. And I have some examples here. So for instance, the word mere. Mere is something like, oh, you're just that, that's it. So like the mere linguist. Oh, like just like an unimportant, pathetic little linguist. So we can use it in the attributive position. So remember, this is where the adjective occur occurs right before the noun, but we cannot use this in a predicative position. So we cannot say the linguist is mere. That is an ungrammatical sentence in English. Words like former work the same way. So we can say the former king, but we cannot say the king was former. Now there's a few other examples in English. So eldest, we can say the eldest daughter, but we cannot say the daughter was eldest. We saw soul from before, so the sole survivor. We can't say the survivor was sole. A total, it was a total failure. We can't say the failure was total. And utter, so in a phrase like utter nonsense, we can say utter nonsense, but we cannot say the nonsense was utter. Those are all examples of ungrammatical sentences. Now, it is claimed in a lot of textbooks that there are adjectives that can only be used in a predicative position. Now, 30, 40 years ago, that might have been true, but in modern times, you can use pretty much any adjective you want in uh, an attributed position. So words like alone, you could say the clown was alone. But in modern times, if you said the alone clown, it would be a little weird, but people would still get it. It doesn't sound absolutely terrible, like the king was former. It is not to that extent. So you can use any adjective you want in the attributive position. Okay, now let's take a look at a sentence and let's try to find our attributive and predicative adjectives. So I'll read this out loud and then we'll start identifying our adjectives and labeling them. Okay, the corrupt officer thinks that I am happy. Really, I'm a crazy person, but I'm crazy enough to survive in modern society. Okay, so you can pause the video and find these if you want. Okay, let's go. So first of all, the corrupt officer. Well, officer is a noun, corrupt, is describing the officer and it's appearing right before the word officer so this is an attributive adjective okay next thinks that i am happy okay well happy is a description and it's a description of what well it's a description of i so this adjective is crossing over the linking verb be or the be verb be so this is a predicative adjective you can tell if it's predicative because it's not occurring immediately before the noun that it's describing. Okay, next one. Really, I am a crazy person. So crazy here is describing person. So this is an attributive adjective. You might be thinking, hold on a second. Here's I and there's crazy. Why isn't this predicative? Well, actually a crazy person, that entire thing is describing I but the adjective itself, crazy, is describing person. So that's why it's not predicative here. Next, but I am crazy enough to survive in modern society. Okay, so in this case, this crazy is linking to the word I. So fortunately we have to draw this arrow over a couple sentences or over a couple lines, but this is an example of a predicative adjective. And in this case, we don't have a noun after it. So it's not like I am a crazy person enough. It was just, I am crazy. So it's describing I instead of some other noun appearing after it. Okay, crazy enough to survive in modern society. So we have the final adjective here, modern, which describes what type of society you're in. It's not an old society, it is a modern society. So here we have three attributive adjectives and two predicative adjectives. And that's it for adjectives. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.